today and as we talk about things later, uh, that you're quiet in class because this picks up everything. If you're whispering in the back, it's going to pick you up. So you want to make sure that uh, make sure that you're quiet during the, the lessons and stuff that we give. <laughs> do what you got to do. <laughs> okay. In terms of textbooks for astronomy, there are some textbooks in the back. Uh, if you want them, you can take them. I don't use them, but if you feel like you'd be gypped out of a textbook by taking this class and not having one, they're back there by the telescope if that's something that you want to have with you. Some people like to have the extra information and stuff. So if that's you don't feel bad, go ahead and take one. That's totally fine. Uh, but yeah, I don't really have a textbook for this class. I just, I kind of, the way I made astronomy is I, I found we have like 23 topics that we go through. And that's all the different planets. It's, it's different stars. It's galaxies. Uh, different moons, things like that. And I just picked out what I thought were the most interesting things about those, and I slapped them onto a PowerPoint. And uh, basically that's what we're going to be doing over the course of the year. We're going to take a tour of the universe, starting here on Earth, and then we're going to go further out uh, into other planets, other galaxies, and other worlds. So, you don't need to have a textbook with you, but what that does mean is that there's a much higher importance on you taking good notes. Uh, the PowerPoints that are going to be in class are things that you do not need to write everything down on. I will point out exactly what you need to write down from each slide. So make sure that as we go through this in class, you don't like um, take a picture of the notes with your phone because that's way too much material for you to study for when we have quizzes. I'm narrowing that down. Part of my job as a teacher is to narrow down all the stuff that doesn't matter into the stuff that does. And I try and do that to make these quizzes that you'll have uh, easier on you. So don't just do that because it's not going to work for you. <clears throat> we'll go on to, I'll go on to Schoology and just kind of show you the layout before we talk about the syllabus here. All right. So this is what it looks like for astronomy. You can see projects and guides are here. Uh, presentations, these are the PowerPoints that I give in class. And miscellaneous is right there. This is where you'll find the syllabus and other small things. I really don't think you need to print anything out for this class. Uh, I'll just open these up to show you what's in them here. For the projects, we do a couple different projects that will be handed out in class as paper. So you don't need to do anything with those unless you're just not there that day. The PowerPoints that we go through are all listed right here. But again, you can't just look at these and pretend you're ready for the test. That's way too much information. Um, what you have to do if you miss a day, maybe you miss the day that we talk about meteors, um, it's okay to download this and look at the PowerPoint, but you also have to go through and watch the lesson that I give on it because that's where I show you exactly what you need to write down and what you need to study for the quiz. So make sure that you're aware of that. You have to make sure you watch those lessons if you were not in class for them. Just the syllabus, okay. So yeah, on to the syllabus. Welcome to astronomy. It's an amazing world, and it's a fun class to teach. I always enjoy it. Before we get rolling with this, just something I'll tell you right off the bat. Um, this is not a hard class. <laughs> if you just put in a little bit of time, you'll be just fine. A vast majority of your grade is going to be on quizzes. There's really no homework in this class, except you got to turn your notes in after you're done taking them and that'll get you a perfect score for notes. Uh, so it's those, and it's the quizzes. After each section that we do, I'm paraphrasing the, the syllabus. Um, after each section that we do, whether it's the Earth, whether it's meteors or comets or the moon, uh, we have a short 10-question quiz the following day. And that quiz is based exactly on the stuff I have you write down from the PowerPoint the day before. And that's all the work that you do in this class. I think there's 22 or 23 quizzes, and that's all there is to it. So um, 
even though there's not a ton of work for this class, you do need to make sure that you study those notes. It, it takes a while to recover from a 5 out of 10 on a quiz. So, you know, make sure from the get-go that you're starting with, with good study habits. And again, the fact that we don't have textbooks, I'm counting on you guys as responsible, mostly seniors, uh, to actually use that as an emphasis to spend more time studying the notes that you took as opposed to pretending that you're going to, you know, read all the junk in that textbook. Uh, that's a huge emphasis on, on making sure that you study those notes, that you listen in class, and that you are set to go for the quizzes each day. Questions on how that works? Because other than that, there's really not a whole lot here. If you were in my physics class, this is going to seem like cake. So I think it's, I think it's important to have easy classes on your schedule. I mean, it's an elective. You have tons of things that you're all doing right. already. So you can read all this if, if, if you want. It's on School of Euphoria. I actually spent a good amount of time writing it. It's pretty well done, I should say. Uh, but again, it's not a it's not a tough class. What else? Um, there are three days in astronomy, really. One day I'll be presenting you with material. Another day you'll be quizzed on material. Another day we'll watch a video. If you don't like videos, this is not cla not the class for you. We watch a lot of them. But the thing with videos, though, because it's such a big part of class, is you got to make sure that you're actually paying attention and watching those videos. Uh, you can't be on your phones during the videos. You can't be on your phones at any time. So you want to make sure that, that you are paying attention. What, again, one of the things that I'm going to be strict about, because there's not a lot, whole lot of stuff to do, not, not a lot of work that you'll be assigned with in this class, is the work that we do have and the stuff that we do have up there, you've got to make sure that you're here and present and listening for. All right, so that's the deal. Talked about that. Talked about that. Talk about that later. No tests. Extra credit. If you want to do extra credit, you can write on something astronomy related. Every half page is worth one extra credit point. And of course, that's double spaced. I've got all sorts of astronomy magazines over there if you want to get something from those. Yeah, as long as it's astronomy related. In terms of the bottom stuff here, uh, Obviously, you want to be respectful of all people. One person may leave. Okay, so yeah, here's the thing with the hall pass now. So they used to have a hall pass over there, but we can't have everybody's germs get on that. So every time you go to the bathroom, you got to ask me permission, and i got to write you one of these fancy things. So do your best to limit that to like once a week, if not less. I would appreciate it because it takes a while to fill this out. And I, I'll probably have you fill out the top, and then I'll sign the bottom once you're done with that. Uh, but it's kind of a pain. And you can only use the middle 20 minutes of class. So don't come in and, you know, right when you come into class and say, can I use the bathroom? You can't because uh, you'll be late. So you want you got to wait for the first 10 minutes of class to pass, and then you can ask to, to use the restroom. And, of course, use common sense. If you're about to throw up, just run to the bathroom or run to the sink in the back of the classroom. Uh, so yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to come get you and say, you need a pass, you know, I understand. <laughs> exactly. Um, it's up to you to be responsible for days that you miss. That means, again, watching the lectures on the notes that are on there. You have to do that because if you don't, it's too much information to study for, for a quiz and you're not going to do well. When you are making up missed quizzes, strongly encourage you to do that sooner than later. The later students take missed tests and quizzes, the worse you guys in general do. I'm just saying that in general from the last 10 years that I've been teaching. So you want to make sure the sooner you make that up, the sooner you're going to get it done and that material hasn't completely left your memory yet. Take care of your business. Late work. You don't really have homework in here, so whatever. But if you do, it's 40% off if you don't turn it in on time. Yeah, good. Uh, you guys want to see a card trick? Yes. Some of you have seen this before. If you have, do not explain how it works. I guess it's ace of spades. Okay. Oh. Those of you watching at home, you can fast forward probably 10 minutes. 
just need to be shorter. Yeah, but not as <laughs> short. <laughs> All righty. A couple other things. 117, I think. I really do enjoy teaching this class. You're going to learn a lot of things that... Uh, that you didn't know before. I suppose that's for every class that you take, though. Sometimes. <laughs> okay. So, what else here? Obviously, you want to talk about respect and stuff. Make sure that there's, you know, using common sense, no swearing, no cursing, all that sort of thing. Make sure that um, you do take good notes because those are going to be, uh, those are going to be graded. After you're done taking notes for something and after you're done with the quiz, I collect those. Uh, and you get points for, for the notes that you take in class. Um, if you miss a quiz, it's in the grade book as a zero until you make it up. So make sure that you do that as soon as you can. Uh, again, you're not going to be penalized for taking it after the date. You just have to take it at some time, and then the, that grade is going to replace the zero. Just don't worry if you miss, and then you see that zero in your grade book. That's going to change. Yeah. It's not going to be all the quizzes. So the final exam, uh, and I'll remind you of this later, every, every section we do, I, most of the sections, I have a little handout that goes with it. And the final exam is going to be just on the little handouts that I give you. Kind of like that. It should be pretty simple. Uh, again, phone policy, those should be away. They should be out of sight somewhere where they're not going to distract you. Uh, especially when we're taking notes. So make sure that you take care of that. Talked about the hall pass. Make sure you're not sleeping or talking or working other homework in class. Because again, it's not just about what's up on the slides. You have to know exactly what to emphasize uh, when you're studying for the quiz the following day. If, if you don't, there's way too much material up there and you're not going to be able to isolate what's important and what isn't, and you're not going to do well on the quiz. So it's very important to make sure that you're paying good attention and taking good notes. 
make sure that you check your grades regularly. Uh, being mostly seniors in this class, uh, that means I'm not going to run after you if you s start slipping a little bit. You know, it's, it's your responsibility to keep up with your grades and make sure that if you have questions or if you need to make things up, that you take care of your business. Uh, so just know that I, I'm not going to be running after you in that respect. So this class, not quite as much as my others, I, I think I know more people and have had more people in this class than my other ones, but a majority of you folks I've never had in class before. So I just want to make sure that you know, even though you guys are mostly seniors and you haven't had me until now, I know you've got, you know, good strong relationships with other teachers and coaches and things, but my door is always open if you want to come in and talk about anything. If you want to come in and, and talk about astronomy, that's great. If you want to come in and vent about your day, that's great too. Be happy to just come in and, and have you, you know, talk about whatever's on your mind. So just know that my door is always open. I have prep periods, first hour, seventh hour. I'm here before and after school. So feel free to take advantage of that. And I, I mean that. I'm not just saying that as something that we're supposed to say. Uh, I, I suppose I'll just say one, one of my regrets about teaching upper level classes is I don't, I'm not able to develop those relationships with you guys when you're younger. So feel free to come in and talk. What's that? I'll make that sacrifice. I'll, I'll pass. Okay. So I'll give you a quick tour of the room. And we've got a couple other things to do. And uh, you can take this camera with you. No, it doesn't. This is going to be interesting with all these cords around here. I'm just lucky that it can to can connect. Okay. There's random stuff in my life over there. Feel free to look at that. Uh, this behind the glass is all for physics. So if you have me in physics. Okay, over here, if uh, the 
class three starts on fire, the extinguishing is there. When you guys starts on fire, the fire blanket's up there. Um, lunch menu is there. What's for lunch today? Uh, chicken sandwich. Okay. Sixth Center Astronomy, your tray is this one down here. Oh. And uh, this is the homework hand in area. So when you hand in your notes, you're going to go into this tray on the right, not the left. The left is where I put stuff after it goes in the gray tray. So you're always putting things in on the right side. Yeah. Good, good. Now what? What's the red button do? Uh, it's supposed to shut the gas off, but I don't think it works. You know what I think would be awesome? If we replaced the natural gas with laughing gas? That would be great. Or helium. Wouldn't that be awesome? No, what's the one thing that makes your voice really deep? Oh, I don't know what that's called, but I know what you mean. Yeah, it is. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I got two things left that I want to take care of. So, obviously, because this is astronomy, and we're going to eventually get to different stars, different planets, uh, we have to start somewhere. And we're going to be starting on Earth. And what better way to start on Earth than by watching just a few episodes of Planet Earth? So... We need to figure out what episodes we're going to watch. 14. So I've got... Let's see. We'll do one each for the next three days. So we'll have three different episodes. All right, here's the thing. We need to eliminate two of these. We need to eliminate two of these. The first one we'll get rid of just by comments that I hear out in the open. So what looks the least interesting? Great Plains. All right. Great Plains is gone. We got to get rid of one more. Fresh water. No, not mountains. Fresh water. Fresh water. Fresh water. Fresh water. Okay. I'm hearing. I'm hearing a lot of fresh water. Yeah. Okay. What's an What's an example of shallow sea? Actually, I need to watch it, Josh. All right. So we'll start tomorrow with mountains. Okay. <laughs> so again, this is the first time that I've had most in class. So I just want to tell you a little bit about myself, and uh, we'll adjourn for the day. Mr. J. Mr. J gives a test on himself. Really? Yeah. He makes you take like two pages of notes and then has a test on it. <laughs> Mr. J test. Okay. So, um, I am 36 years old. I was born in 1983. I can't believe I'm halfway to 72. Um, okay. Oh, so, I know. That's kind of morbid. So, in 1983, uh, I just put this up here because this is kind of what <laughs> music album covers looked like back then. Uh, it's a little bit different from what you typically see these days. These were some of the popular movies that were out back then. You might recognize one or two of those. Hulk Hogan was huge in the early 80s. And I was a... Yes, he was literally huge. <laughs> For several reasons. Um, when I was growing up, I was a huge Larry Bird fan, which is why I am a Boston Celtics fan to this day. Sorry. Oh, I got it. Yeah, they, they took it. They had they took it down from the top where I had it uh, over the summer, but I got to put it back up. It's in my drawer. So, when I was really little, 
I had one of these fancy things. This is Teddy Ruxpin. And what you would do is you'd open up his back and you'd stick a cassette tape in there. And he would, like, narrate and his eyes would blink. So, I know. It's a little demonic, but it was fun back then. This is the uh, church that I was, I was brought up in, Trinity Lutheran in Nina. It's about 100 miles north of here. Uh, I'm from the Fox Valley up there. Uh, I went to Trinity Lutheran School, preschool through eighth grade. That's what the side of the school looks like. While I was a little kid, I enjoyed uh, cartoons. The real Ghostbusters, Batman the Animated Series, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and, of course, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They were probably the biggest things from when I was a kid. And I never quite grew out of that. This is my wife and I and two of our friends at one of the more recent Ninja Turtle movies. I'm not sure. He was just there. I see. He looked at lightsabers. Oh, those are nunchucks. Oh, he's Michelangelo. Uh, I also was big into video games. This was the first video game I got addicted to, uh, original Mario Brothers. Probably my favorite game of all time was Street Fighter II, though. I think I've spent more time playing this game than any game uh, ever. Also a big fan of the Sonic the Hedgehog games. And by the time I got to high school, they started making games in 3D. So I got a PS1. And uh, this was the original Resident Evil game. Good times. All right. So by now, I'm in high school. And I went from a Lutheran class of 25 to um, Oshkosh North High School class of 425. Pretty big change. And while I was at Oshkosh North, this was the car I drove. It was a beauty, as you can tell. This is the actual thing. I played basketball. We were also the Spartans. I was in the musicals. That was fun. Also worked at the movie theater to make money for college. That's what the inside used to look like. Harry Potter 3. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Uh, also, we did a lot of promotions at that theater, which was fun. Uh, for Batman Begins, when you guys were like three or four, probably three or four, right? That was 2005. Two. Two? two. Okay. So um, when you were two years old, I was dressing up as Batman. And uh, this is actually my wife now. We married 13 years after that. That was kind of cool. And it was fun. I was on the roof, and I was, like, waving at the kids as they came in. It was a blast. We also did this, this skit in front of the movie theater uh, before the show would start in the space between the front row and the actual screen. Uh, it was a blast. It was a good time. Also, when I was in high school, my parents got the Internet. <laughs> and then I went to college. Uh, this is Halsey Science Center, third floor, uh, where I spent most of my time up here. This was UW Oshkosh, where I went to college, and that was the physics department. I also got my first cell phone in college, and it looked like this. So I graduated UW Oshkosh, and uh, I only got to 117, don't I? Okay. And I decided to get a degree in physics with a professional emphasis because I wanted to be a scientist. So this was my final research project. The main thing I want to show you on this is up until this time, Everybody had this background like a solid color, and I was like, screw that, man. I want to make the background look fun. So I put a big starry background, and now everybody does it that way. So anyway, just wanted to mention that. So I got a job as a scientist here, a little city called Muscaday, Wisconsin, uh, at a company called Scott Industries. And while I was working there, it didn't take long for me to realize that oh, I just I wasn't passionate about the research within physics that I was using my degree for. What I was passionate about was the stuff I actually learned in school. And that's what I wanted to go back and I wanted to teach. So I went back to UW Oshkosh. This is their education center. And I went back to the movie theater to get, I got licensed to teach from the college. But went back to the theater too. That's back when there was still film. Uh, it was a good time. A couple of things I enjoy doing in the summertime. This is my brother and I doing an obstacle course. It's a half marathon obstacle course called the Tough Mudder. It was fun. I play softball, I play basketball, I run, I play darts, I'm married, I'm the one on the right here. Oh, and the yeah, I still have those. I wear those to school every so often. Uh, so we're married, she's awesome, 
and we have a little baby. This was uh, Halloween last year. His name is John. Those are my parents, and that's the little guy around Christmas time. That's him throwing up on Daddy. It was, it's like, this is like a life in a nutshell, isn't it? You can choose to respond to this by getting mad that this is a comfy shirt. Or it can be like, this is hilarious. And I always do the latter. I always try to find the humor in things. And he was just so excited, he couldn't keep that milk in his stomach. And he's, he's awesome. He's crawling all over the place. He likes to get up on two feet. He can't walk yet, but he still likes to use whatever he can to get on his legs. Kids in their phones, right? <laughs> That's my car. These are, and it's not a, it lo I took a picture and it looks fancy. It's not. It's a little compact car, but I like to pretend it's a sports car. <laughs> These are my favorite sports teams. I can actually explain. I have some time to explain. Good. I'm a Celtics fan because I loved Larry Bird as a kid. I'm a San Jose Sharks fan because I thought Sharks were awesome since I was a kid. I'm a Packer fan because that's what you do in Wisconsin. And I'm a Cubs fan because when I was a kid, we spent a lot of time with my grandparents, and he always had Cubs games on. So a lot of fond memories watching those with him, which is why I'm also a Cubs fan. I am related to Anne Hathaway. We're like sixth cousins or something. But there is actually a relationship there, believe it or not. All right. In the end, I think sharks are really cool, but they're misunderstood a little bit because if you just slap human teeth on, they don't look nearly as dangerous. There are also things that I don't like. I don't like mint. I don't like nickelback. I don't like the TV show Big Bang Theory. I generally don't like people who are better than me. I don't like lily pads, stingrays, fruits and vegetables, loud advertisements, the city of Los Angeles, cats, penguins, anchovies, but most of all, never under any circumstances bring a snake into class. I hate snakes. They freak me out. You must have that one challenge. Oh gosh, I did not like that. What's wrong with penguins? I love penguins. My ex-girlfriend liked penguins. Oh, okay. That's understandable. <laughs> <laughs> a slinky is just a spirally snake. No, who else?